Well, I'm returning uh, with you all on my Saturday afternoon rides and bike rotations and whatnot. I uh, stopped over here at my buddy's garage and thought I'd... Uh... Oop, missed neutral there. I need to adjust the shifter. We adjusted uh, the position and it's a little too high right now. Anyway, uh, I decided to get the uh, monster out for a rip. It hasn't seen the roadways in a little while. We had it apart to do the starter and uh, oil change and the maintenance, and it's just been a little while. And that shifter is not quite in the right position. It looks right when you're next to the bike, but when you're on it, it's uh, too high up. So I'm gonna have to fix that. So I need to update the records on it. 5,700 miles about, or 5,709 is the oil change, and uh, ready for the next uh, next interval here. Get these mirrors bumped back where they need to be. It's so dusty, it's been in that garage for a while. So this is another fun one to blast around town, but it's not really a good commute bike. It's a little, uh, I wouldn't call it temperamental, but the clutch, oh, nice, now we gotta sit and wait. Uh, the clutch is uh, really stiff on it, and uh, it's just so torquey down on the bottom that it makes uh, you know, moving around in traffic a little bit uh, annoying. It can be done, of course, but it's a little uh, hard, to, hard to live with and stop and go traffic. And I mentioned it before, but you know the heat, even right now, it's baking my legs, baking my thighs and the back of my legs just from the heat coming up off those heads. Because your legs are, you know, just inches for, away from those heads, or cylinder jugs, rather. I've got another uh, Ram mirror mount. I might put it on this guy. I think I've got one that fits the Ducati stuff. The stems are a little smaller. Uh, these stems are smaller than most of the metric bikes. Nice to put a little X mount on this guy. this light because you can never tell if you're still green you can't see it from the intersection at all yeah see there it is it was already turning red on me you can barely do a u-turn and i've had people run that uh light you know in anticipation and i'm stuck out there in the middle oh wait gets surprisingly good fuel economy for an 1100 um, it does all right it's not good but you know low 40s and it's sprung about as tight as the r1 maybe a little softer uh, the ride over, you know, most of these bumps is, uh, is tolerable. You still have to get up out of the saddle a little bit just to avoid getting beat up. On the brakes is always where it gets you. It's <laughs> like right there. And oh, 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 oh. oh, man. Sound a little tickier than I remembered. I don't know. Maybe I'm just used to the other bikes. Fresh oil, and I know we got the right viscosity in there, so and the right amount. These newer Ducatis have got pretty long uh, maintenance intervals on the valves. This uh, I forget their proper terminology, the Desmodronic or whatever it is. 
<laughs> the old ones used to be maintenance horrors, man. You had to maintain the valves every 6,000 or 8,000 miles or something. These are pretty long. I want to say it's 16,000 mile adjustment interval, something like that. It would make living with these on a, a long-term basis as a everyday bike a lot more tolerable. A lot of bikes out today. It's good weather. This is another one of those bikes though that just like the R1, it's so easy to get in trouble with speed. It's a very supermoto type feel on this one where you're real far forward. There's nothing in front of you, uh, and you uh, you can't really gauge your speed on this as well as you can on a lot of bikes because there's just nothing out there, and it's so torquey and so fast that uh, you end up going, hey, jack off. And our horn is messed up on this, and we're going to have to fix that. Uh, comfortable speed on this you look down and you realize you're going 15 or 20 over the limit even on surface streets like right now what am i doing 44 or 45 Ugh, big bump uh, it's just a big twin real torquey and uh it doesn't sound like you're revving out very much you're just kind of loping along and you're going way faster than you thought a lot of times Our horn got goofed up when we were doing our service, apparently. I need to get in there and fix that. It was uh, all shorted out, going blah, 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 kind of warbling. That's okay. I've got plenty of extra horns. I will remedy that situation. In fact, I don't know if I've got one of the small uh, Sound Bomb Minis. I've got one of the bigger ones, the air horn set. I might have to order uh, another Mini. Thirty bucks, though. It's a great thing to improve your safety in traffic. Got plenty of torque. She'll go. It's a lot like the R1. You gotta get the R1 a little higher up in the mid-range before it'll launch real good, but. In my, uh, one of my earlier ride vlogs, I compared the Riker's roll-on performance to this one and the R1. Um, I don't know, yeah, that'd be a good test. I'd have to do them side by side, and that was kind of my posture on it before, is uh, I need to uh, actually have them out on the road at the same time next to each other. Uh, it takes off pretty good. The Riker's right there with it though. And you never have to hunt for a gear on the Riker. You just twist it and away you go. Yeah, what, I'm at 72? Yeah, that's about what I told you. ridden one of these bikes in a while I have to recalibrate my sense of speed you know, it's a different seating position and you know the, the feel of the bike to make sure I'm not running 80 when I think I'm running 60 yeah 72 I'm gonna stare at around 70 avoid collecting a ticket videos was commenting that his 
Riker vibrated so much. It was worse than one of his older Harleys, uh, and he said he wore padded gloves, everything, and it was really bad. Uh, I don't think the Riker is vibey. This monkey is vibey. This thing will put your hands to sleep. Big V-twin, and it's a, it's a very vibey bike. It's just part of its personality, you know. Uh, you get used to it. You learn to hold the grips much lighter. You don't want to squeeze them so much because that just transfers more vibration into your hands. Ooh, it is windy. The wind is picking up. I, don't, I know we don't have any storms in the forecast, but this feels like storm rolling in kind of wind. I don't have a toll tag on this one, so I can't take the uh, HOV lane. I have to stay out here and rub elbows with traffic. Rubbing elbows okay, as long as I don't end up trading paint. Or skin. Ooh, that is strong wind, man. We're up to probably 18 steady 25 gusts right now. That is windy. This has been a very windy year. Uh, I don't remember dealing with the wind as much uh, in previous years. Previous rides, for that matter. Looks like I need to tighten up these bar end mirrors. They're not staying put. Need to loosen up the bottom clamp and tighten the top one a lot more to get more tension on that ball. These are not uh, CRGs, they're cheap Chinese knockoffs, I guess. eBay, or sorry, uh, Amazon specials. About half the price of CRGs, but you know, half the quality too. So it'll definitely outdo the Riker as far as top end goes, but the, the roll on from let's say you know 60 through 90, I bet they're pretty close to each other. It's kind of what I was saying in my first comparison when I made that uh, comment. But yeah, this will keep pulling way beyond that. A lot more horsepower. So I think these are a little over 100 horsepower and a lot more torque. And a lot less weight to pull. I mean, Riker's around 600 pounds, and this is 370, 380, something like that. I don't remember. One thing that's always bugged me about this bike is there's no fuel gauge. Um, Got to watch for the low fuel light. Similar with the R1, uh, that 2008 R1 doesn't have a fuel gauge. It has, uh, you know, a little fuel warning. Good God, it's windy. Woo. Um, you'll, uh, you know, be riding along, not even 100 miles, and that low fuel light will come on sometime. Like what? This would have been a really good test for the Hellmike as well. I could have uh, left it in the helmet or you know, swapped out into the audio adapter on the GoPro. I just didn't want to cut my tie wraps loose. But obviously I'm going much faster here than I do on the Cub. And I'm out in the open air. So it would be a good uh, wind noise comparison test for the, the Hellmike versus the Carter. Yeah, it is ripping pretty good. That flag is standing out even further than it was earlier. We're running a good 18 to 20 knots steady right now. It's a windy day. Another little minor gripe I've always had about this thing is it's very hard to read the speedo on it. Uh, the the reflections and the light and everything off of this and especially off of the uh, steering damper that I've got on here 
uh, it glares right up onto the uh, the spot where you want to read this the speedometer. It makes it hard to see. You got to kind of really, really look at it, which is not good on the road. You want to look at the road, not the damn speedometer. the Ducati Monster Evo as a commuter is an everyday. No. It's fun, but no. It's not comfortable enough for it. It's way too vibey. Uh, the ergonomics are not bad. Uh, the seating position is a little more upright than the R1. Uh, it's, uh, it's tolerable. It's livable as long as you're not sitting in traffic because the heat will cook your legs off. However, the, the vibey handlebars and uh, you know, just the overall comfort now. That roll-on spot now. That's only half throttle right there. So the Vibe handlebars combined with the uh, the kind of heavy clutch and uh, overall manners in town, it just, I don't know, makes it not a good commuter. Of course, that's not what they had in mind when they make these bikes. These are more uh, bruiser, cruiser, you know, naked bike. They want to they get out and have fun. They don't want to do the daily grind. There's a full throttle glass. Full throttle, it really, uh, it really lurches pretty good. That was 97. It does all right. You can definitely move through traffic and stay visible and uh, you don't have any lack of power to get yourself out of a situation. That's not good. Um, you know, like I've said before, on a bike, if you can get away with it and if it's safe for the conditions uh, it's always good to maintain a, about a five mile an hour closure rate on the rest of traffic um, staying at the same speed of, as traffic is not a good idea because you blend in um, and if you're going slower than traffic then obviously you're a rolling roadblock and you're just uh, making problems for yourself and everyone else even if it is the legal speed limit, you know, doesn't matter. Not in heavy traffic like this. Stand with the flow or slightly faster is the only smart option on a bike. He's throwing rocks. Woo, that hurts. A bunch of gravel kicking up off the back of it. Getting me in the knees. use this one for any long distances so I don't have a throttle lock on there and I can't relax my hand so I like it when I come to a stop I can stretch out my uh, wrist and my elbow and get rid of the tinglies because this thing will make you tingle all the vibes and of course now sitting at a stop in 85 to 88 degree heat and 190 200 degree heat pouring off these uh, cylinders my legs are liking it not Yeah, these mirrors are moving around They're way too loose. I'm gonna have to tighten them up, pull them off of there, clean out the sockets, make sure they're not dirty before they get a good grip. I noticed 
this bike do that a couple times uh, between fifth and sixth gear it'll hang i don't know why it doesn't i was thinking the oil change would fix that but it hasn't got to be very deliberate on the if you're just tooling along the low speed like this if you try to go up into sixth you got to be real eh, you know really lift that lever up Closed, but I think they cleaned it up. Yeah, they did. I had to pour new concrete right here. think and uh, resume later if I go back out for another ride and 